Okay, this is the knife I bought for five dollars at a yard sale the other day, and uh, I'm gonna rebuild it. It's not the handle is in terrible shape. I mean, the pommel is just you know it's gone. Actually, I could probably unscrew it. I drew this little box here so I have an idea where to keep my hands so you can see what I'm doing. I haven't decided what I'm going to do with this. If I'm going to stick with, uh, you know, the rough shape of what it's like now. Or if I want to do a, that's not supposed to be there. That's just somebody trying to take up the extra space. Hmm. That's funny. Somebody's got, somebody tried taking care of this. I'm going to pop these open and see if I can just squeeze this off of here. Wow, somebody put tape all on it and everything. So, uh, I can't decide if I want to, uh, you know, just fix this up original, or if I want to put a nice, like, hidden tang on it. Uh, I don't know yet. I, if I do put the original, I'll have to put spacers in both ends and clean that up a whole bunch. I think that's aluminum. Oh, I'll tell you, I'll know in a minute. <laughs> Yeah, it's aluminum. So, uh, let me tell you a little bit about it. This company, uh, Anton Wingen, A-N-T-O-N, Wingen, W-I-N-G-E-N, was started in Solingen, Germany in 1888. And this particular knife is called Othello Rostfrei, Rust free, I would imagine, uh, and with Solingen, Solingen steel. The blade is in decent shape for the. Oh, uh, I was able to determine the age of this by the sheath. The sheath, this design on the sheath, and this is the original sheath. The root, I, I thought that it might not be because it had. It's not fitting in there, but this leather has definitely, definitely shrunk. And I can see there's a little indentation where there was this chrome metal tip up here, which is gone. And uh, this has been repaired. The rivets are not the original rivets. As a matter of fact, they're not even hammered together straight. I don't know if you can see how far this is off here to here. So uh, 1943 is when this was made. And a little bit about the history. The man who started it in 1888. Then, I believe it was the 40s, his two sons took over. And they ran it until the granddaughter took over. And now this company, uh, Anton Wingen, they make mostly kitchen cutlery and kitchen stuff. Kitchen-related stuff. So uh, they're still, still out there since 1888. You know, I kind of think I'm going to stick to this and uh, put it back together as original as possible. I will go back with some nice uh, spacers on either end. So the next thing I'm going to do after this <clears throat> is uh, clean this blade up.
All right, now I'm gonna put this in my vise behind me and I'm gonna sand this blade down by hand. I'm not gonna go beyond the uh, Ricasso. I don't wanna alter any of that writing up there. Uh, there's just a little hiccup in the blade right here and it has had the ever-loving crap sharpened off of it, but uh, I can bring this back really nice with a nice edge on it, and you won't see this little hiccup here, right on the, let me see how well you can see this. Right here, it's got a little, right here. But uh, I can fix all that up. Okay, let me move to the other bench. Alrighty. All right, this is uh, 220 that I'm gonna start with. I don't know uh, if it's a low enough grit. It's not in terrible, terrible shape. Actually, it's in fairly good shape for a blade that's 80 years old. But uh, I'm gonna make the blade look just like it. Oh, and it's got a little bend up here, so I can fix that too. Not much, you really gotta look close to see it. Yeah, I think 220 is going to do it. And then I'll move up in grits and uh, buff it out, make it shiny like it was when it was brand new. It's been used. It's got some dings in it, and I'm not going to sand the dings out. This thing is 80 years old and it deserves to keep some of his battle scars. And it's got a little fake edge up here. Clean that up too. I think this is going to clean up pretty nice. Got some really deep scratches that I am going to try to sand out. I may have to go down to 180. And I'm gonna make a new sheath for it. The other sheath is beyond repair. The leather is just shrunken and dry and brittle and it's uh, not savable. I'm gonna work on this a little bit. I won't make you watch the entire thing, but uh, I'm gonna do both sides at 220 and then go 32400 and hit it with a buffer. Okay, it's still got some uh, deeper scratches in it. Right here, there's a couple. Up here, there's a couple. And uh, I'm not sure if I wanna make this thing look brand new or just clean it up. I mean, it's 100% usable. So uh, I'm gonna think about it, but uh, I am gonna sand a little more on it. I haven't done the other side yet, just this side. All right, uh, I've got the little bobble out of the blade there. I, I put this on my grinder and uh, I grinded uh, basically a new edge on it, which uh, there's barely any come off there. So now I'm going to go into my buffing room, and I'm going to buff this really good. Still got a lot of scratches in it that will not come out, unless I just sand way too much metal away. But uh, 
I'm gonna clean this up on the wire wheel and then I'm gonna buff this on my buffer. So I'll bring you in that room. after being buffed there's some some minor little scratches in there but not bad at all for an 80 year old knife i did hit the writing with a buffer and it and it came clean and didn't write the didn't buff the writing off 
So uh, now I'm going to do a little bit of sanding and straightening on that. And then I'm gonna buff it, it's brass. And this, I'm pretty sure is aluminum. And uh, I think what I'm gonna do is hit it with my wire wheel that I originally put this on here. Hit it with a wire wheel and see if it will smooth that out some. If not, I'll have to sand it and then uh, I'm gonna buff it because that will come nice and shiny too. So that's something I gotta do. I am gonna go back with the original and I was wondering if this was real antler and it is because uh, I squared the ends off on my belt grinder and the stink is unmistakable. So it's real antler. Okay, now I will need to fill in, you know, this fits like this here. And originally there was a spacer on this end, a spacer on this end, and then the, the butt cap. And then that gets threaded on like that. So I gotta figure out, number one, what I'm gonna use for spacers and how much I'll need, which I've got all kinds of wood that I've saved because it, it was nice wood, but uh, you know, this, this is kind of cool, this wood here. This is, uh, it shines up real nice. And that's what it would look, that's what you would see, is that. You know what, I think I'm, I got two pieces of that. I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah, and it doesn't look pink or purplish. It looks uh, like a dark, dark red with black in it when you get it cleaned up and buffed out. So there, that's, that's solved. All right, um, I'm gonna, this has got a, like a ding in it right here and uh, I'm gonna clean this up with a file or uh, some sandpaper and then I'm gonna go hit it with a buffer and then I'm gonna put that on the wire wheel and see if it will clean up some of them pits and then if it does I'll buff it if not I'll have to come back here and figure out how I'm gonna sand this all right we'll be back I don't I don't want to bring you in there for that little bit all right I got this apart it was hell getting them pins out but these weren't flush like that so i had to sand these edges where they would meet flush and uh took me forever to get the pins out of there so this is the pommel and uh i'm pretty sure this is a hammered finish because uh there's no way this thing could have 10,000 little tiny symmetrical dents all exactly spaced apart. And so uh, all I did was shine it up a little bit. All right, now I work on a little finger guard there and then I'm gonna Google. I think I might try some, I wanna clean these up with a you know toothbrush and maybe a wire brush but uh, I don't know what I can use that wouldn't hurt the, the antler, maybe some vinegar. We'll see, I'll Google it. I got a little alcohol here. I might try some alcohol on it just to see what it does. Alrighty, uh, that's what I'm gonna do next. Clean that little brass finger guard up and then see, see what it's gonna take to clean the handles up. Well, I'm gonna use these walnut pieces as spacers because that's gonna give me just enough room to thread that on back here so all right i'm gonna get these cut out and you know i might get this put together today and i am going to use a whole bunch of adhesive underneath this and uh put the pins in anyway all right i still gotta i gotta cut them pieces i gotta polish this little thing up here and uh i could have this together today all right, I got it glued back together. I think it's gonna look all right. I'll have to do a little sanding on the spacers tomorrow. But uh, we'll let this dry overnight. We'll be back tomorrow. All right, it is the next day. 
and uh, the epoxy has dried. Now I'm gonna shape the spacers, clean it all up, and I'm going to have to uh, cut the pins and then take a, a punch and uh, flare the heads of those pins out. So uh, I think I'll do that first. Well, there we go. I'm uh, kind of happy with how this come out. I'm not, I got to put an edge on it yet, but uh, that's the hard part there, the handle. And uh, I didn't put anything on the handle. I buffed it with my buffer. So if anybody's interested in this, let me know. It is 80 years old. Let me see if I can give you a close-up of the uh, Othello Solingen Rostfry. Anton Wingen Solingen, Germany. And it's Anton Wingen Jr. is what it is. It's about as close to original as uh, you could get it. I, I cleaned the blade up some. I did not get all the scratches out just because uh, I didn't want to make this look brand new. I just wanted to make it look usable. And it is. It's a good usable knife now. It lasted 80 years. It'll probably last another 80 years. All right, I'm going to make a sheath for it, but not today. I, uh, my wife and I, we got to go vote. Oh, I'm going to make a sheath for it, but I'm, I'm going to throw that in. I'm just going to send that with it just so you can have the original 80-year-old sheath with it. So if anybody wants it, oh, what about a, how about a hundred bucks? Is a hundred bucks, I mean, I only give five bucks for it, but by the time I, you know, make a sheath and count the, the day and a half or so I put on this, I think it's worth a hundred bucks. And that includes shipping. So uh, let me know if you want that. And uh, if it's not spoken for by the time I make the sheath, I'll offer it one more time with the sheath. But it will be one of my standard fold over sheaths. Not, it won't be a sheath like this. It'll be a sheath where this fits down in it. And uh, the sheath will come up to about oh, two thirds of the way up to handle. And it'll have a backwards belt loop on it, just like all my sheaths. 100 bucks. Shipped in the U.S. Okay, we're going to go vote. And then I bought some shelving that I got to put in my oh well, my uh, storage pantry. My man cave, my computer room. Uh, you know, we've had food sitting on the floor in there, canned goods and stuff like that. And uh, we're going to get it up off the floor so we can see what we have and then start using it like you're supposed to. You know, the oldest stuff gets used and the new stuff gets put in the back and you shove everything forward. And... Okay, so uh, I'm gonna call this a video and I'll make another video when I do the sheath. I have another knife that I need to get, at least get to work on a little bit for and trade for those propane tanks because I really wanna get them and then see how on earth I'm gonna afford to fill them up because uh, I think Propane is, what, five or six bucks right now a gallon? Or is it a pound? Hell, I don't know. But uh, I'll figure it out. I, I figure if it's by the... Well, wait a minute. No. A 100-pound propane tank. I'll have to figure out how many gallons it hose, cause, holds. Because I don't know if they sell it by the gallon or the cubic... How do they sell it? I don't know. I guess I could take it to... a. Uh, that's, I'll call Tractor Supply. That's what I'll do. All right. Have a good uh, Tuesday, y'all. 
I have been doing stuff. I just haven't been recording it. Well, yesterday I did this and uh, I wanted to put it up as one whole video where this thing was finished. And uh, I'm gonna take a picture of this and it will be the cover picture. And the title will probably be uh, Restoring an 80 year old knife or something like that. So there you go. Got all the original markings, got all the original scratches. I mean, it's still a good looking blade, but uh, I did not go crazy trying to make it look brand new and trying to, cause it's an old knife. And uh, they don't make them like this anymore. This is stainless by the way. Alrighty, have a good Tuesday y'all.